Good afternoon, folks. I'm your host, Sharif with Niger. Welcome to Fake News. Today we are talking to Denise Desai. She's a former Peace Corps volunteer and has intimate transnational experience through her travel to India. Thank you, Denise, for coming. Thanks for having me. Denise, today we're going to discuss how microcosms of white culture affect power dynamics. And we thought that you'd be the perfect person to talk to about this with your experience in the Peace Corps. Yes, I would love to talk about my experiences in India. I have such fond memories of my time there. I miss it dearly. I'm glad to hear that. My first question is, how was your experience in India as a Peace Corps volunteer? I fell in love with India and its beauty. I met my husband Lawrence there, and we have two beautiful children. As for our group, I think we were somewhat guilty of assuming we were the center of attention in India. We were there to quote-unquote save the Indian people. We definitely had a bit of a savior complex, going in there and expecting to change lives based on our own standards. Peter especially. Interesting that you mentioned Peter. How do you think his view of India differed from yours? Oh, Peter. He sure was something. He, and to a lesser extent the rest of us, felt very included. Peter specifically used this feeling to kind of boss around our chef. Things quickly changed. If you wouldn't mind, could you talk to us about that incident? Yes, well, after our chef died, we were immediately excluded by the Indian people. Our power quickly dissipated. Suddenly, we realized that we were the foreigners. Perhaps our intentions were not what we thought. Why do you think that happened? Well, I think that the power dynamic created by our whiteness was fragile from the start. One wrong move, and suddenly the Indians realized that we should not have been in charge in their country. We could only be in power for so long because of the color of our skin. Peter kept to himself, purposefully staying excluded. I guess he thought, he thought the more he interacted with the Indians, the less power he would have. So now I really have to ask, what is it like to be white in India? I think in a lot of ways, I was included and excluded at the same time. On the one hand, I was idolized for my whiteness. People would stare longingly at me as I biked up and down the streets. It was in these moments where I felt most included, but perhaps it was simply an idealization. However, there were also ways I was excluded and objectified. Men did unspeakable things near me, and it made me feel strange in a place I loved dearly. In respect to my life as a white woman in India, Inclusion and exclusion were ever-changing. One moment I was in, the next I was out. Thank you for sharing that with us, Denise. It was very illuminating. We are going to move on to a different topic. I know you went to Sarah Deer's talk at the College of William Mary a few weeks ago. How was that? It was a powerful talk. A difficult topic, but Sarah Deer is amazing. Do you see any similarities between your own experience and that of Sarah Deer? That's a hard question. She did talk about women like her who look white, but are Native American. She says she's more readily included in American culture because of her appearance. And the reverse is true for people like her in Native American communities, because they are excluded due to a loss of, quote, authenticity and their skin color. It just goes to show how context is important when it comes to being included and excluded. I think context is the defining factor. Sarah talked about Standing Rock. The protests show that the situation can override established in and exclusion associated with skin color. So many white people helped with the protests. Perhaps in an exclusion is more fragile than we think? Interesting. Because of our time constraints, I'm just going to broach one more topic with you. You're familiar with the article Racial Symmetries, right? Yeah, I've read it. Why do you think white authors are able to have the agency to write whatever they want without the assumption that they're writing about themselves? Wow, you're asking some tough questions today. The readers need to know. Okay, well, I think this phenomenon is especially prevalent in the U.S. 
because of the entrenched power dynamics of race. White people are held in such a high regard that people believe that minorities can only be trusted to write and tell stories about the minority experience. White people have freedoms that other people don't. One such freedom is their ability to address stories they have no real experiences with. It's a sad reality, but one that exists nonetheless in this country. Thank you for that answer. Unfortunately, we are out of time for a little discussion today. I want to thank you, Denise, for coming to chat and providing your insights. Thank you for having me today. That's all, folks. Tune in next week for more from Fake News.